I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and part two of the LG Optimus 4X HD full review starts in just a second. But first, some love to Best Buy Mobile for hooking us up with phones like this for use in our One Paul Bandit giveaway game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile to get your smartphone, you won't deal with rebates, waiting eight to ten weeks for paperwork, all that stuff is gone. At Best Buy Mobile, you'll get the after rebate price. Is LG's latest flagship phone the ultimate Android smartphone? Let's find out in part two of the review, which starts right now. Part two of the LG Optimus 4X HD full review. Now, if you didn't catch part one, go back and watch it first of all, but second of all, this device is not available in the United States from a major carrier, so you're not gonna get that subsidized pricing here. If you're okay spending $600, take a look at it from Negri Electronics or Expansus USA. We got ours from Negri Electronics and we paid about 600 bucks for it. So look for it to be about 600 bucks, but if you're looking for something a little bit less expensive, $199.99 gets you the HTC One X and the Samsung Galaxy S3 on their respective carriers. The Optimus 4X HD is LG's flagship phone announced at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, packing a quad-core 1.5 gigahertz Tegra 3 processor and a 4.7 inch display, IPS HD display at that, 8 megapixel camera, 1080p HD recording, front-facing shooter, 2,150 milliamp hour battery, and Android 4.0 with a new version of LG's custom user interface. So to kick off part two, I'd like to talk a little bit about LG's custom user interface and some of the personalization choices that they've made in this newer UI. First of all, you'll notice when we go into apps, you'll see that the apps are tightly packed together. This is something I did after I had the device for about a day. And what I love about this, at least like more, I should say, about LG's user interface this round is that there are more personalization options. The downside is their personalization options are just a little bit fragmented. So you can see here, for example, I can show less icons if I want to. I can go back to larger icons and show more, go back to smaller. That's well and good, makes a lot of sense. But when you come into, and forgive me there, let me back out of this and go into theme, and then you can see themes are here, and I can see the theme stuff, but then I go into settings, for example, and I can go into display, and I can see font type, font size, and I can go back down through here, home screen, I can see theme, animation, screen effect, wallpaper. So it seems like all these personalization choices are just a little bit fragmented, but that said, there are some cool themes. You've got Optimus, Biz, Cozy Wall, and Marshmallow. I'm gonna bring it in so you can take a look a little closer here and see that the icons are a little bit different depending on which theme you go with. You'll notice, let me wait for this to focus in. Come on, let's see here. And you can see that the icons are ever so slightly different. And of course the backgrounds, but then the icon to the biggest change. I have business on right now, and I can change the background wallpaper, of course, and uh, animations, things like that. And you can see here the animation as I rotate from screen to screen. So you do get some choices. I like the abilities. It's a better option as opposed to older versions of LG's custom user interface. That said, personalization still could use a little bit of work. One thing I do love, though, if you watch my reviews on any of the later Android devices, you can put a percentage up in the top right hand corner along with the battery meter. How you access that is by going to Power Saver and coming down here to battery information and just clicking battery percentage. Love that, I think every Android should, device should have a physical battery number. If you don't wanna turn it on because it freaks you out when you see that number and you think you're getting too low too fast, that's fine. But it's one thing I've always loved about iOS is the ability to see an exact percentage and it's so nice to see that coming to Android as opposed to this little arbitrary battery meter where I'm like, do I have enough battery to make it through the day? Don't I? You know, I can't quite figure out if I do or not. But here's call, and you can see, of course, all these different settings for Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, call, and more. So these are the settings. Android 4.0.3 running on this right now. Back up and reset and more. So those are the settings. Take a look at contacts as well. I'm going to come into phone, actually, and access it that way so you can see dial, the dial pad, and we'll load up 611 just so you can see what a phone call looks like. Again, ice cream sandwich influences here. You can see the large picture. If I had a picture for somebody, it would show up. And I can go over here to contacts actually and pretend to call somebody. I've got my call logs, fake number here for Alexis Stevenson. But I can call Bill Stevenson, for example. And when I hit send, it's a little bit of a blurry picture, but you can see that it pops up right there. And then I've got the call info up there at the top along with my dial pad, Bluetooth speaker, and more. So this is what your contacts look like. And again, we'll go into Alexis here, for example, because I have it kind of filled out. You can see the information about her job. She's the president of Fake Company Incorporated. They make billions and billions and quadrillions of dollars a year, because they fake, yo. And then you can see the picture here. You've got your phone number, calling, messaging, and then email. I have this set as a home email, but it would really be a work email. Alex at fakeemail.com. And then my notes, point of contact for supplies. That's the joy of making these really quickly. No idea what point of contact for supplies actually means. Uh, in relation to Alexis Stevenson, just seemed like a fun thing to write. So John Rogers and more. So you can see they're organized by, of course, alphabetical order. 
and you can scroll back and forth and easily access particular contacts that way. Now I want to focus also on some of LG's uh, applications that come with this device. Things like LG Smart World. LG Smart World is a, and we'll load up, yes I know that it takes, or that it charges. Let's see, LG Smart World. And then bam, the application store starts up. Now Smart World is LG's custom application store on top of Google Play, so you can get some additional applications out of uh, Smart World. And then of course you've got some other applications which we'll take a look at. So it's loading up right now and we'll do Quadrant Standard of course in just a second and speed test. But I'd like to really focus on this one because this is one of the applications uh, that I think is a little bit beneficial. You look at things. Another really cool one is Remote Diagnostics where you can click the application and an LG representative can uh, take care of your device for you without you having to tell them, you know, I'm in settings, I'm doing this, I'm trying to do this. And they, you know, can get confused. They can actually command the device much like you can on the computer with a lot of tech support programs. So Smart World is starting up. So LG Smart World started up and running here, and of course you can see some paid applications here. They have top free and top paid also, and you can search. So very similar to Google Play, but you get kind of an LG customized store. Let's take a look at Quadrant Standard as well. High, high marks, I don't want to spoil it for you too much, but high marks here obviously thanks to that quad core 1.5 gigahertz Tegra 3 processor. So it's loading up now, and I did take this actually on a road trip yesterday. I had meetings in Greenville, South Carolina, and took this with me, used the navigation, so used Google Maps, and made some phone calls. Very impressed with the earpiece. It's nice and loud. This thing's easy to hold up against the hand, or hold up against the ear, rather. The, the thickness is at the perfect size to me where you can easily hold it up and not have to worry about it being too thin or too big. It's a nice size, and it's hard to say 4.7 inches is a nice size, but you know, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on your view, 4.5 to 4.8 inches is kind of becoming the norm for high-end smartphones right now. So 4.7, pretty easy to hold up against the ear. Took it to a dead spot, an AT&T node in dead spot in South Charlotte. No issues whatsoever. It did get a little bit choppy, but didn't have any problems with uh, connecting the call. The only issue I'm having uh, from time to time is in my office. Standard score in 3,733. Now that said, I've seen this thing as high as 5,500, so I'm not quite sure why it's reporting so low today. But again, take it with a grain of salt. Now this thing has an 8 megapixel camera that shoots video at 1080p. So we're going to bring in the back of one of my business cards just to use it as an example. And we'll bring this over here and we'll come over and take a, just a quick picture. And pressing and holding still takes the picture. In order to focus, you have to physically click on the screen. But you've got some settings over here, front-facing flip. You've got some flash brightness, focus, image size stuff going on over here. And then you have normal HDR panorama and continuous shot and more. So a lot of different camera choices. And if you do want to shoot in 1080p, you can. Now that said, the camera's not the best in the world. It's clearly not the selling point of this device. Cameras are far, far better on the One X and on the Galaxy S3. So all in all, you know, this is a pretty decently spec device. Really does well in the processing department. Quadrant standard scores, not no, not sure why this one's so slow, but it does well overall. That said, if you're on a, a contract, you want to spend the money, I'd say go with one of the subsidized devices, the One X or the Galaxy S3, just because it's cheaper and they're very powerful devices. That said, this is LG's best device for 2012, and in my opinion, to date, that when the Optimus View, that big tablet phone comes in, we'll certainly take a look at it as well. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com. Stay tuned for dog fights, comparisons, galleries, and more on the site. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, PhoneDog underscore Aaron, Facebook, Facebook.com slash PhoneDogAB, and be a part of our PhoneDog official smartphone rankings at PhoneDog.com slash rankings. Very, very cool program. Excited that we can offer this to you and let your voice be heard in wireless. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great weekend. And stay tuned for more coverage on the Optimus 4X HD on PhoneDog.com. We'll see you next time.